Hey guys, welcome to Medifaction. Today, let's learn about inflammation, that is, acute inflammation to be precise. So, due to entry of microbe or any tissue injury, inflammation may occur. The acute inflammatory response rapidly delivers leukocytes and plasma proteins to sites of injury. Two major events taking place are the vascular events and cellular events and three major sequences comes under this the first two sequences that is dilation of small vessels and increased permeability of the microvasculature comes under vascular events the dilation of small vessels is due to histamine activity and the permeability may be due to retraction or drop out of the endothelium resulting in entry of fluid and plasma protein in extracellular space and we also have cellular event in which the emigration of the leukocyte from the microcirculation their accumulation in the focus of injury and their activation to eliminate the offending agent takes place First, let's see the vascular events. So in normal condition, the leukocytes and plasma proteins are seen inside the artery. Suppose this is the lumen of the vessel and this is the tissue and these are the endothelial cells. In normal conditions, the leukocytes and plasma proteins are seen within the artery. So following a tissue or microbial injury, the endothelium releases histamine which results in vasodilation and this process is rapid and short-lived. The vasodilation causes redness and followed by the endothelial injury, it results in massive entry of plasma protein and fluids towards the extracellular space. Also, stasis of blood within the vessel takes place in this phase which makes this phase very important. Leukocytes has to travel from the vessel to the tissue mediated by adhesion molecules and chemokines. Next is the cellular events. Here, two steps takes place. First one is recruitment of leukocytes to the site of injury. The next is phagocytosis. So first, let's see the recruitment of leukocytes to the site of injury. This process can be divided into sequential phases. First one is in the lumen, margination. It is nothing but the alignment of leukocyte to the endothelium, followed by rolling and adhesion to the endothelium. After that, migration across the endothelium and vessel wall and migration in the tissues toward a chemotactic stimulus or site of microbial products. Let's see in detail about the leukocyte adhesion to endothelium. Normally, the leukocyte travel at the center of vessel wall. This is the vessel wall and this is the leukocyte traveling at the center. Due to stasis or decreased blood movement, the leukocytes marginate to the endothelial surface. After that, rolling on vessel wall is mediated by molecules like selectin and integrin. This is selectin and these are integrins. On the surface of leukocyte, we can appreciate the sialyl Lewis X modified and integrin molecules which are glycoproteins. The integrin is in low affinity state at free stage and when injured the mediators and cytokines are released. The cytokines stimulate the endothelium to express the molecules 
P-selectin and E-selectin on the endothelial surface. So, the glycoprotein in the leukocyte, that is salicylase X modified glycoprotein and integrin, comes and bind with the P-selectin and E-selectin. But the interaction is very low or very weak in nature. So this allows the rolling of the leukocyte even with the pressure of running blood. The phagocytes in sites of injury releases some chemicals which turns this weak affinity to strong affinity by binding of proteins of endothelium. Now the leukocyte has to pierce to the extracellular space. For this, a special protein is required, which is PCAM1, which is the type of CD31. PCAM is nothing but platelet express cell adhesion molecule. They pulls the leukocyte to the site of injury. Leukocytes also secrete some elastinase and collagenases. Following this, engulfment of microbe takes place which through positive feedback mechanism multiple leukocytes are produced recruited to the site of injury this table gives information about molecules present on leukocyte and endothelium and also their interaction so there are three selectin molecules, L-selectin, E-selectin and P-selectin. Among this, L-selectin is distributed by neutrophils and E-selectin and P-selectin are distributed by the endothelium and these binds on the salicylic Lewis present on the leukocyte. Then we have integrins, LFA1. MAC1, VLA4, and alpha4, beta7. Among this, LFA1 and VLA4 is important. The LFA1 is secreted by neutrophils and the other three by monocytes. They get interacted with ICAM and VCAM. Then we have CD31 variety. They help in transmigration and diapetesis. Diapetesis is nothing but the process of leukocyte piercing the endothelial wall and moving towards the site of injury. So this is for a clear picturization of the interaction between endothelial cell and leukocyte. Here you can appreciate selectins, integrins and mucing like PSGL1 and ESL1 and on the endothelial cell we can appreciate P-selectin, E-selectin, ICAM1 and VCAM1 which are ready for interaction. Next is chemotaxis of leukocytes. Broadly there is exogenous and endogenous type. The exogenous agents are bacterial products including peptides that possess an n formal methionine terminal amino acid and some lipids. The endogenous chemoattractants include cytokines, particularly those of the chemokine family that is interleukin 8 is one of the examples. Number 2. Components of the complement system, particularly C5A and also arachidonic acid metabolites, mainly leukotriene B4. Next is nature of leukocyte infiltrates in inflammation. So this varies in acute and chronic condition. In this picture A, we can appreciate the recruitment of neutrophils to the site of injury. If the affected agent is not removed, then it is followed by lymphocytes, which can be appreciated in the picture B. 
So this is followed by an injury which leads to edema, neutrophils and monocytes and macrophages for the site of injury. Next is phagocytosis. It is defined as the process of engulfment of solid particulate materials by the cells. and also circulating monocytes and fixed tissue mononuclear phagocytes called macrophage. To understand this figure, first recognition of the receptors by leukocytes. So as we all know that many receptors like Manos receptor, scavenger receptor, G protein coupled receptor, tor like receptor and cytokine receptor and phagocytic receptor are present on the leukocytes. So here we will appreciate the G protein coupled receptor. otherwise cell eating and the cells performing this function are called phagocytes. The two main types of phagocytic cells are PMNs which is known as polymorphoneutrophils and circulating monocytes and fixed tissue mononuclear phagocytes called macrophage. Now let's try to understand the mechanism. So as we all know the recognition of the receptor by the leukocytes is the first step. Many receptors are present such as Manos receptors, scavenger receptors, G protein coupled receptor, tor like receptor, cytokine receptor, phagocytic receptor etc. Here we can appreciate the G protein coupled receptor, tor like receptors, cytokine receptor and also phagocytic receptor. Many microbial products like N-formal methionyl peptides, chemokines, lipid mediators are present. These can be recognized by our leukocyte system. So here as I told the N-formal methionyl peptides, chemokines, lipid mediators all these are recognized by the G protein coupled receptors and they recruit further leukocytes. What happens here is the cellular response which takes place here is the cytoskeletal changes and signal transduction which results in increased integrin avidity followed by adhesion to the endothelium which is the final outcome and simultaneously chemotaxis also takes place which results in migration into tissues. Next we have toll receptor. The toll receptor recognizes the lipopolysaccharide unit of the microbe and it results in amplification and killing. To be in detail, they produce mediators such as arachidonic acid metabolites and cytokines which results in the amplification of the inflammatory reaction as the functional outcome. And they also produce reactive oxygen species lysosomal enzymes which end up in killing the microbes. Likewise, the phagocytic receptor is also able to produce reactive oxygen species and killing the microbes and they are also able to perform phagocytosis of microbe into phagosomes which also results in killing of microbes. Next is engulfment. The engulfment takes place by forming 
the extant plasma membrane along with cytoplasm around the microbe forming a pseudopod. The pseudopods then pinches off to form vesicle which is known as the phagosome. This phagosome later fuses with the lysosome with enzymes and they combine together to form phagolysosome right here. Inside this the lysosome gets activated and the lysosomal enzymes starts the lysis killing and degradation. The oxidative bactericidal mechanism by oxygen free radicals. This is the most important one. Among this the most competent system is by the NADPH oxidase. So what happens here is superoxide anions that is O2 is produced. These are triggered by phagocytosis. How means a phase of increased oxygen consumption known as respiratory burst takes place. The NADPH oxidase is an enzyme complex having 7 proteins and these are located on the plasma membrane and cytoplasm in normal condition. In response to a stimuli, they form the enzyme complex. What happens is the oxygen is converted into hydrogen peroxide but unfortunately the hydrogen peroxide is not much efficient. So with the help of myeloperoxidase and chloride it is converted into hypoxy chloride. We have other mechanisms. Nitric oxide is nothing but a soluble gas from arginine by the action of nitric oxide synthase. Then we have oxidative bactericidal mechanism by lysosomal granules. Here neutrophils have two main types of granules. The smaller specific or secondary granules contains lysozyme, collagenase, gelatinase, lactoferrin, plasminogen activator, histaminase and alkaline phosphatase. The larger azurophil or primary granules contain myeloperoxidase, bactericidal factors such as lysozyme, defensins, acid hydrolases and a variety of neutral proteolases such as elastase, catepsin G, non-specific collagenases and proteinase 3. Hope you have understood the video. Like, subscribe and press the bell button for more videos. Thank you. Thanks for watching.